Right, so this here is a GX200 engine. Um, this is a clone one um, that comes from, from a company called Lonsin, I think it was. Um, now this is going back a few years, maybe six years or something like that. Um, and before I could fly at all, I decided it'd be a good idea to build and make my own paramotor. So I bought this engine off the internet from China or wherever it came from and um, upgraded it, bought a load of um, aftermarket parts, including things like um, this flywheel, various other bits and bobs. Um, and took it up from six and a half horsepower to around about 17 horsepower, maybe a bit more, um, and flew it. And uh, you can see me flying it here. That's it, keep running, keep running, keep running. Okay, power, 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 power. Okay, keep your arms up, straighten up, straighten up. No, don't zigzag, don't zigzag, keep straight, keep straight, keep straight, keep straight, keep, straight. keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running. Keep running, that's it. So that's my first ever flight um, with this engine. And uh, it was also one of my first ever flights at all. Um, I think my third flight, I've got some lessons and um, flew, flew my instructors, um, Paul Haxby, um, links up in the corner. Um, Paul Haxby's uh, training site uh, tra and uh, learnt how to fly a paramotor because I figured it'd be a good idea to actually be taught how to how to fly um, but um, didn't let him fly my motor I wanted to be the first to fly it so that was a nerve-wracking experience as you can see um, all right so um, what happened was one day I was out flying over the Peak District in uh, in central England when um, when as I got away from all the town and all the roads and everything and I was going out over the wilderness I got a little way um, over nothing <laughs> when suddenly um, I felt that I was losing power and I realised I was losing power I could hear the engine sort of dying behind me I glanced over my shoulder and saw a massive billowing um, kind of smoke cloud thing and um, and power just disappeared within about three to five seconds power completely went I thought what should I do so I, I turned around I haven't got any footage of it unfortunately it was uh, back in the days before I had an action cam and um, turned around and got to get as close to any road as I possibly could. Um, looked for power lines, um, couldn't see any, and, um, and managed to land in a reasonably flat field, roughly into wind. Um, and uh, it was quite a fast landing actually. And then uh, fortunately, still had power on my phone, so I was able to have a look at the maps and find a track. And hottest day of the year it was. And uh, on, I had to go up a really steep, massive hill with 30 odd kilos on my back. So that wasn't a pleasant experience. Got all my paramotor, hid it all behind um, behind a dry stone wall. Walked, I think it was about four or five miles home, something like that, back to my house. Got my bicycle, cycled about seven or eight miles in another direction to where I dropped the van. Um, got in the van, um, drove to uh, drove to where I uh, put all the stuff, and then and then uh, drove home. So that was a, a bit of a momentous day. Um, what I did was, I did strip the engine, I've had a look inside since, but I can't actually remember um, uh, too much about it. Now, what did happen, I don't know if you can see this, is I put a massive crack, um, so if I just hold that there, if you can see here, there's a big crack um, that goes all the way through the engine. So I split the engine in two, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take it apart and um, have a look and see if I can work out. Now these are just temporary bolts in here. I'm going to take it apart and see if I can investigate, find out a bit more about what happened. So. Right, I'm going to have a look, first of all, at this camshaft here. And I'm looking for any potential problems. I can't see anything. If I just um, show you that, those lobes look good and smooth. There's nothing, nothing obvious. And that's the decompression there. That um, what that does is um, when you when you start the engine, it, it'll um, it'll push open the uh, the valves. I think it's the exhaust valve, um, so that you haven't got quite so much compression. It makes it easier to pull start it, and then once it's up to speed, uh, centrifugal force will push that out of the way, and it, it won't affect it. It will just run like normal with the normal exhaust 
valve. Um, I can't see anything on there that looks that looks broken, damaged. This is looking in pretty good condition actually. There is a big clonk out of it just here. Don't know how that happened. I'm wondering. If, I, I have had various other instances with this uh, with this engine. I had one where where something really severe happened inside. I can't exactly remember what it was now. Let's just take off this giant zip tie. Whoop! Right now you can really see, hopefully, <laughs> where the split is in the crankcase. So you can see basically what's happened is cylinder head has essentially come off. So I'm just going to pull that off. A couple of lifters, a couple of push rods. So the cylinder head, that's where it snapped. Um, just all the way around there. I don't know if you can see that. All the way around there, big crack. And it's just snapped the cylinder head off. I'll put my glasses on, see what's going on here. Right, it looks like it cracked through the middle of where that bolt was there. Um, no sign on the no sign of of the um, piston uh, colliding with anything if I look in here um, nothing in there looks like it's been hitting anything so it's not a top end issue so I probably don't even need to get probably don't need to take the head off now I had a lot of compression going on. I did work it out at one point, um, and it was a ridiculous amount. I can't remember the exact figure. 14 to 1? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, but it was a, it was a lot. Um, okay, we seem to have lost the skirt. Right, okay, we've got more damage here. So I'll show you this. The flat top piston. The flat top piston there, it's got a big... Uh, chunk come out of it and the skirt around this so on both sides this side and this side the skirt has come off so it must have been it must have been um, man, having said that there's no damage on there I don't know why the skirt would have come off maybe it was hitting something as it went round uh, We've also got a clearance issue here where the con rod has been hitting all the way along the bottom there. But what happened, what was what was caused and what was the effect, I don't know. Let me just rotate that round. So if... I'm going to try and pop this back on, see if we can work anything out. Right, there's no piston rings on there at the moment, I must have taken those off for some reason. I think, I think a lot of this engine might be salvageable. Right, let's have a look, see what we can work out. So, as that spins, that's not it's got about two millimeters clearance there nothing's hitting anything <laughs> again two millimeters clearance at roughly maybe three mm, two I'd say two millimeters clearance on the bottom of the piston and two millimeters clearance on the crankcase here um, what would cause it right any suggestions if you've got any ideas that I haven't got Put them down the bottom. Um, put them down the bottom, and we'll try and try and uh, come to a conclusion. But I'm not right. Nothing's hitting inside inside the uh, head. 
that is just about clear and I think that those marks probably happened after after the cylinder head came off and it had room to move so these marks in here probably happened after um, you know as a result of the accident rather than causing it um, Tell you what, it's pretty thin casting. The casting's three millimeters thick. Um, if you work in imperial measurements, that's uh, oh, I don't know, 120 thou, I suppose. So right, we've got. We seem to have a bit of play in the piston. Get that apart in a minute. Now we look inside. That is a pretty demolished. Sorry, a bit of play in the conrod. Um, it's a pretty demolished piston, I have to say. Conrod looks in good good order. Nothing's bent. It's got a couple of dents in it, but it looks all right. Right, let's see if we can get this. Um, conrod off. Sorry about that. I just had to have a route around in my um, Imperial toolkit, which obviously I rarely get out. But I found the tool that I want, which is this thing. Um, can't remember the exact size, it's roughly seven millimeter, but it's, it's a 12 point head and it fits onto there. So I'm able to hopefully get in there, turn that so you can see it, and we'll try and get this off. Right, let's have a look at this. What can we see here? Nothing, nothing terrible. The shells don't look that worn. I mean, if I was reusing that, I'd, um, I'd keep those shells, but I mean, I'd uh, replace the shells, but nothing terrible there. So here's the thing. Um, I've just noticed that the wrist pin here doesn't have either of the uh, circlips in that hold it in place. Surely I couldn't have forgotten to put them in. I mean, I don't know if I took them out at some point since or if I just forgot to put them in, but that possibly could explain why that chunk is taken out of the piston there and why that was hitting. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, can't really go too far wrong it can push through to about here but it's still in the right place I don't know there's um there's no evidence of scoring I don't think on the uh let's have a look might be I can't feel anything but might be a bit of a line there just in there but nothing nothing too serious I'm wondering if i took those out when i initially dismantled it who knows pop that back in um right my conclusion is that I upped the compression so much that it literally blew the head off. It's another crack here, actually. Just, uh, I don't know if you can see that. There's a crack here going off and down there. Um, but literally, it's the head. The cylinder head just blew off. Dull. And that is not what you want when you're a thousand feet above the Peak District. Boom. It was an exciting day. If you have any suggestions or ideas about what might have gone wrong, then please do enter it in the comments below because I'd love to 
love to try and build up a bit more intel on this. Okay, thanks for watching. Later, aviators. The engine's running all right, get some height and have a play around with it. If it's not running correctly, you need to think about coming into land.